Hi, um, thank you for having me, um, Kevin. I uh, second what you just said <laughs> about the conflict of interest. And um, I also have a uh, conflict of interest with Barbara. I was part of the... Yes, I know. <laughs> it's never acknowledged, though, at the end of the papers, right? <laughs> um, I was a postdoc uh, with Kevin for a year um, in um, uh, 2014, and that was the first attempt at um, arriving at SCURF, which is called Spinal Cord, uh, cord Injury and in Regeneration Texts. And this is basically articles that are selected for a very narrow topic and uh, from which um, the um, beginning, the core of a, a knowledge base um, the kind of Barbara um, alluded to um, is created. So what's, what is the goal? Um, the goal uh, for this second attempt, uh, four years later, is to automate the um, process of annotation syntactic and semantic to arrive at scale because the literature is mounting and hand annotation is just not uh, feasible. For scale. Uh, this is a, a quick outline of spinal cord injury from uh, two weeks uh, ago in, uh, in uh, Nature. Um, it is a major concern. 500,000 people a year um, um, experience spinal cord injury, and that's uh, not only debilitating in terms of their life but uh, it also has an enormous economic cost. Um, so <clears throat> this is also a data-rich field. As Barbara said, it is very complex biologically, and therefore there are so many ways to approach it and so many different data sets that need to be linked together. The original approach was uh, basically syntactic annotation with off-the-shelf NLP tools. Uh, using UEMA, which um, even though it's um, an information management application for unstructured data, it is actually very rigid in its uh, type representations. So unless you know what you're doing, don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the first selection of the articles was basically just by major uh, mesh annotation in PubMed, uh, which is only... Um, which is a very crude measure uh, of what you actually need in your um, knowledge base. Uh, and a manual uh, an annotation based on expert knowledge towards the creation of, uh, uh, of an ontology. Four years later, um, there has been um, a lot more work and um, a lot of new resources that have come that can be used for a new approach based on uh, neural network uh, language models. This is, um, what, what is shown here is a recurrent neural net that uh, learns to create text uh, on a char um, character based, um, on, on a character level, which is quite amazing. Of course, this is not going to work for biomedicine, but um, the scale can be regulated. The, um, there are three um, very interesting uh, and accessible data sets for training uh, the, the neural nets. The first is CRAFT, which is um, uh, the, one of the, it's the magnum opus of <laughs> Kevin's group. Um, it is a gold standard annotated uh, set of uh, nearly a hundred um, biomedical articles that are um, um, so full text and also open access. Uh, for Bob is uh, Larry Hunter's uh, magnum opus, which um, is um, an enormous um, RDF triple store, um, including um, information from most of the oboe ontologies and um, several large uh, databases. 
uh, what are we? We're talking about 500,000 RDA triples, uh, 500 million RDA triples. The problem with that is that we just, um, we, we need Google scale computation to actually be able to work with that. <clears throat> but it's great for training. <laughs> Um, Regenbase is a very recent uh, appear um, arrival at the um, SCI scene, uh, and that also has a manual annotation of about 50 articles, plus an ontology um, that has been extracted and basically um, registered with um, Obo. The one of the biggest um, questions um, that was implied in the beginning is how do you actually um, assemble a set of articles that, um, and this uh, goes back to the quality of the information that uh, our first keynote speaker mentioned. Uh, what is uh, a high quality article that gives um, um, highly reliable information, what isn't? What isn't also RAM? Or what was your term? Me too. Me too. <laughs> right, so <clears throat> one way to address that is to have um, a recurrent a recurrency in the model which allows you an iterative, interactive human machine um, um, assembly of, and selection and filtering of that set. The word embeddings, uh, you might, if you work with uh, uh, neural networks for NLP, you're probably fed up with that. But um, word embeddings are essentially the corner store of um, neural approach in NLP because um, they are an, um, a representation of what neural networks actually learn about words and concepts. So. This recurrency, um, so we're not just talking about recurrent neural networks, but basically feedback into, from, from the results back into um, the sources, uh, source selection of the whole model pipeline. Um, this will around, um, allow ref, um, refinement of the embeds. If you start with a very um, large embedding, that uh, covers all of biomedicine, you're probably, not, this is probably not going to be very um, uh, it's not going to allow you to focus, uh, to, to do focus discovery in your own very narrow field. So you have to, uh, but at the same time, you might not know from on, on, on the flip side, you don't want to go very narrow because then you don't have any extra information that you might not have overlooked already. The vision is that um, using uh, neural uh, NLP models might actually give us the scale that we need to um, in, in annotation. The, the, the Barbara talked a lot about the experimental site and the um, the experimental data. Uh, this is the second part of um, of the puzzle. This is where the literature um, is you know, the information from the literature is, is extracted and homogenized to be able to be integrated with experimental data into an uh, operational knowledge base. Ideally, um, in, in our dreams, we would like to be able to do automatic search for mechanism in, in the large parameter space uh, and in a large um, knowledge base. For BLA, um, I've already um, learned a lot from the others. Uh, and number one, um, I'm catching up on the state of the art in BioNLP. Um, they're very uh, interesting new uh, um, uh, developments as, as late as um, the uh, uh, NIPS that just passed in Long Beach. Um, the three models that I, uh, I would like to set up and start training, might, we might not actually have the time to train them just in physically, even in the cloud, 
are an article annotation based on the craft, um, on the training, validation, and test sets um, of the uh, uh, craft corpus. The article digestion used in PDF box, which actually um, touches on a previous, one of the previous talks about uh, what do you do with a PDF, which is really a disgrace in the, in a, um, as a dominating format in an age of structured information. And, um, I, uh, okay. And the, um, the uh, uh, first selection of the uh, skirt article annotation based on uh, regen base, uh, which also has um, um, open source the articles and, um, and the code that will be used. Um, they're manually annotated, so this is uh, another either silver or gold standard and um, analyze and report the results. Thanks very much.